Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. First, I want to start off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, I come before you in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that you have your way tonight, that you use me, Lord. Lord, I pray that you remove me and that you become the one speaking through me, through the Holy Spirit. Lord, I ask right now that it reaches someone here, Lord, that's lost, Lord, someone that don't know you, Lord, someone who's thinking about God being saved. Someone who's thinking about giving up, Lord. I pray right now, Lord, that you let this word touch someone's heart. Not only theirs, Lord, but I need it too. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, I just want to give a shout out. My son is here and his girlfriend and my good friend, Carmen, is here along with them. Praise God for them and my husband. Thank you, Lord, for everything. But I'm going to get down to the real nitty-gritty. What we came here for was to hear about a spiritual awakening. And wondering, why do we need a spiritual awakening? Well, because of sin. Sin got into the world um, through Adam and Eve. So I'm going to just tell you a little bit about it. Um, Biblical, a spiritual awakening, is awakened from a spiritual sleep. But a resurrection from the spiritual death. All people are born in sin and are separated. We're dead. But thank God for Jesus. In Ephesians 2 and 1, it states that before we knew Christ, we were dead in transgressions, sin. And the reason why this happened was because of the sin of Adam, which we inherit We all were separated from God, who is life. Romans 5 and 12 says, we cannot experience or understand or relate to a holy and perfect God in our unregenerated state, nor can we enter into his kingdom. So that's just a little bit of what why we need a spiritual awaken, saints. I just wanted to give you just a little bit because, see, in order for us to know where we're going, we got to know where we came from. We got to know where it started from. But my first point that I want to break out to you today is that God is a restorer. He will restore you because he loved you. Don't you know this? And product, and I, I was, this, this just wrong with me. I, I had something altogether different, but the Lord gave me something different. And I'm going to go with what God gives me. And it's not in the King, chapter 15 and verse 11. And he said, this is just how God brought us together. It says, in a, in, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me a portion of my goods that falleth to me. <laughs> And, you know, what a prodigal, if you, if you don't know what a prodigal, prodigal means someone who goes out and spend their money ridiculously. They'd have no um, value. They just spin it and spin it and spin it, and it's just not good. And a prodigal son is someone that was back in the day when they had a prodigal son or a son who did not do what God what they did with their parents, the parents would form a, a, a meeting with the elders. You got to know where we're coming from first. We got to know what we're doing and why we're talking about it. You know, when, when, when they did wrong, they, had to, um, they would go to the elders and tell them, I have this son, and he's just not doing good. The elders would call a meeting, and then they would just decide that they're going to kill this kid. That's what it was before Jesus came. 
When you sin and you had a child that didn't do good, they stoned them. Because they said, we got to get this out of us. We don't want this bad lineage to go on and on and on. So this prodigal son, he decided that, hey, I want my portion, Dad. Can I have it? Father could have been upset thinking, well, what do you want? You, this is something you get when I die, but you want it ahead of time. Sometimes, you know, we want things before we're supposed to have them. We have to learn to wait on God. We have to trust God that he's going to do that which we're supposed to have. So you know what? So the father said, okay, I'll divide it. The father gave it to him. The younger son went out, and he went into a far country. Because, see, when you're doing sin, you don't want everybody to know what you're doing. He went way in a far country. This is in verse 13. There he wasted his substance, and he lived a rotten life. He had spent everything. Then guess what happened? See, God knows how to get your attention. See, God knows how to bring you back to where you're supposed to be. So there comes this famine now. There's a famine out here. So now he loses everything he has. I, I, I'm trying to go somewhere. He lost everything. And then he, 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 he ended up, see, in, in, back in the day, the Jews, the pigs are a disgrace. He ended up in the pig pen where he ate the husk of the pigs. He, he got to thinking, now this is where restoring comes. Now, this is my second point. God will restore you, okay? So, and he will redeem you. In order to be restored, you have to be redeemed first. Redeem brings on restore and then redemption. But let me just break it down to you right here. He realizes now, hey, wait a minute. My father, he has servants that are eating better than me. Why am I here? Why am I going to sit here and eat this when I can go home? But see, he, he, he became ashamed. Because see, what sin does, sin makes you ashamed. Sin, sin makes you feel like you're, you get separated. You're separated from God now. Now you don't want nobody to know what you've been doing because you've been doing the wrong thing. So he says, wait a minute. I'm not even worthy enough to be called my father's son anymore. I am going home, and I'm going to ask my dad. I'm going to say, Dad, can you have me as one of your servants? You can read the story. I'm just going. I'm, I'm going faster than what it is because I ain't got much time. He says, I, I, I've been out here doing wrong, and I'm, I'm going to go to my father. But don't you know? When, you, when you're out there, God is with you. Because, see, in my Bible, God says, um, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. <laughs> because you can count on God. <laughs> God is going to be there, and he will meet you where you are. <laughs> he don't care how far down you're in the ditch. <laughs> he don't care what you've been going through. <laughs> he don't care what you look like. <laughs> What he care about is your soul. And he says, that's why I sent my son for someone like you. This is Jesus giving the illustration. He wanted the people to know. See, this is Jesus talking about the prodigal son. He wants you to know no matter how low you get, God is a restorer. God will restore your saints. So what he did, he come walking home, and his father was waiting for him. They say, you know, his father had this idea. I know I've been praying. I've been on my knees. You know how we mothers are about our children. We stay on our bending knees, and we praying for our children. Lord, we want you to bring them back, Lord. Bring them back. When I came up in the church, back in the day, the mothers would go down on their knees and, and they would pray and they would pray and them kids would come running home. You didn't have to worry about where they was. But I'm going to tell you, his father saw him. He said, come on. He said, my son was lost. See, we were lost, but now we're found through the blood of Jesus. He said he was lost, but now he's found. He just had a spiritual awakening. He woke up when he was in that 
pen husk. He says, wait a minute. I think I better think about this thing. I think I better wonder where I'm been. I've been in the house where I had everything. I had it made. I didn't have to do anything. I didn't even have to work. My father provided all for me. But then I decided I wanted to go out there because, see, I knew I had an inheritance. I knew that I had something, and I want to go have fun. I want to do all kind of manner of things. And so he comes, and his father sees him. He says, um, go home. I want you to go get me a calf, and I want you to get the biggest calf there is. See, a big calf means that there's going to be a party. That means that there is going to be a celebration. See, don't you know that when a, one of us get lost and we come back to the fold, the angels in heaven, they are rejoicing in joy, joy, joy down in our they're so for us. They want us. Jesus said, there is so much that I, I, all I want you to do is ask me. So he put the robe on him. And see what a robe represent is something that a father has. The Roy, the robe of forgiveness, the robe of Jesus dying on that cross. Then he said, I want to put a crown on him because see, Jesus is king of king. So he put that robe on him. And then he said, now let's go have a party. Let's go have a party. So they had a party and they rejoiced because the son that was lost, um, he is found. See, when, you, when you've been, re see, he got redeemed. See, redeem is something that you get that you shouldn't get. He got restored. See, first he got redeemed because he came to the knowledge of Jesus. Then he got restored. And then there's another portion to this. And then there is redemption. Redemption. Now you can walk with Jesus, now you are a child of the king. You are a child of the king. I know I'm going to take my seat. Bishop, I know I only had 15 minutes, but I got so much to tell you. God is love. Jesus paid the price. He paid the price on the cross. He paid for all of our transgressions. He paid for all of his saints. So let's wake up. Wake up. Remember, he'll meet you where you at. He'll come running to you. He says, now cast. This is in 1 Peter 5 and 7. He says, cast your cares upon me because I careth for you. Don't you know? It don't matter how low you've been. Don't matter what you've been doing. Don't matter how you look. Folks going to talk about you when you come back. They're going to say, did you see Sister Hoo Hoo and Sister Doo Doo out there? Because, see, that's what the son said. He says, now, I'm, I'm so upset. My father is throwing this party, and I've been here all the time. Jesus is saying to you, don't you know that you've already been with me, and all that I have is yours? You don't have to worry about when I start blessing this other one. All you need to do is rejoice with them and be thankful that they came back. You ought to welcome them with welcome arms. Don't get mad because God put them up higher than you. Don't get mad. Celebrate. Celebrate because they were lost and now they are found. Let's wake up. Wake up. Oh Zion. Wake up. <laughs>